Hey guys, Tricky2k here. Finally back with another car review, and this time it's of course time to review the newly released Extreme Car Pack. The first out of four planned and announced DLC packs. I'm pretty sure we're going to see more DLC packs down the road, uh, but in this case, if you missed, uh, there's a pack containing three cars being released each month with the last one coming this April. This pack features the Aston Martin Zagato, the SRT Viper GTS and the Fiat Arbarth 500. All of these cars are available for performance only, but the Arbarth that comes with an S3 specs as well. If you're a season pass holder, any of these cars will be added uh, as full stock versions to your garage upon release, which has already occurred by this time. Uh, however, you still need to purchase the specs for or tiers for these cars with your in-game cash as well as any visual customization, um, apart from the official paint jobs and rims which can be found in your HQ. First of the bat, we have the Aston Martin V12 Zagato. This is a car celebrating the 50-year collaboration between British Aston Martin and the Italian Zagato. Where it all started with the DB4 GT Zagato back in 1960. I won't dig into their visual aspect that much, but uh, I don't really like the back of the Zagato. It doesn't really fit the car if you ask me, uh, but particularly its taillight, which more reminds me of a Ferrari rather than an uh, Aston. But then again, it's um, a British motor car without Italian styling. Luckily for you though, I won't review the car uh, for the looks, but rather its performance. Acceleration is decent, but it struggles a little bit with the first gear, at least in automatic of course. And um, with my tuning setup I have for this car. Uh, nitrous will cause wheel spin pretty much instantly, so you have to be um, really you know, uh, manageable within the nitrous by applying it in short bursts to be able to use like this properly, or well, at all really. Um, the car, however, handles really good, and I think that you find that this is the easiest out of the bunch to handle. The car never really seems to understand and, and doesn't get stiff at high speeds. Uh, acceleration is um, quite good throughout all, all gears as well, and I won't bother you with the top speed since it's pretty much always never important in any tier of car since they're, they're balanced. and. Um, it doesn't matter uh, with the top speed uh, with any car, more or less. Uh, it's not at all uh, a new king. Four-wheel drive is still where the kings remain, and um, they will still reign there until they patch and uh, decide to go in a different direction. But um, you can put up a good fight in it. Uh, plus, it's very fun to drive since it's so accessible around the uh, the corners. Next up we have the SRT Viper GTS. For those of you that don't know, SRT is a short for Sweden Racing Technology and is a part of Chrysler, Chrysler uh, with the purpose of designing and producing high-end racing and, and or sport cars for uh, Chrysler, Dodge and in Jeep. Now this car, on the other hand, is by far the sexiest one out of the bunch. Uh, it looks really badass, sadly though when it comes for, for performance, it mostly brings ass, or maybe bad ass, I don't know. <laughs> like all muscle cars in this game, it has too much wheel spin and struggles with the first two gears shifting into the next one. Uh, this also, of course, means that the nitrous has to be applied in very gently touches and short bursts in order to have any effect at all. Uh, this car is also not uh, ideal for shorter, t uh, tighter tracks with a lot of corners because it will wheel spin um, and it will become a little bit more difficult to, to manage around the, the corners. Um, but unlike this, I got a, it will not be as grippy around corners as well at high speed and requires much more control. Uh, it's a shame really, but as of now we would actually stay away from this car unless you really like it and want a good challenge. Uh, however, if you face someone who's not a complete moron behind a wheel, I uh, think you will struggle a little bit with it to, um, to, to rake up some wins. Not saying that, of course, that you won't win in this car. It uh, mostly comes down to, to the driver. But if you face someone of um, the same skill level or likewise, you will probably lose in this car unless he, he uh, messes up in a corner or something like that. Last and least, the Fiat Arbarth 500. 
Again, Arborth is a um, tuning company that um, was the, the uh, nastier version of the uh, reintroduced Fiat 500 from 2007. The um, original is, of course, much, much more older. I think it's like from 49 or something, if I remember the Wikipedia article correctly. Uh, this is the only one of the cars that comes with another spec than performance, namely street. This is also, also where the car shines the most. If you've driven the Mini Cooper S, and I'm pretty sure you have since the current King is reached, you know what to expect, pretty much. It's not as good as the Mini, but not far off from it. It slides a little bit more in corner, uh, but it also has almost as powerful nitrous as the Mini. Um, this means that the, um, the car gets around the bends very quickly, and with a devastating nitrous, but it also comes with a small price. Um, it's very sensitive to, to curbs and the like. I also experienced some very odd crashes where the car seems to have some sort of odd clipping issue with objects or something, making the car spin out or lose control when I felt that wasn't supposed to happen, or I, I crashed in, in, in a totally unpredictable way, but still, this is without doubt a king contender for the um, street spec or a tier. Moving on to performance, and being more or less the same as the Mini, this car becomes a double-edged sword. It's without doubt one of the best cars in performance on short tracks where you don't get close to top speed, but on the tracks you do, it has the same problem as the Mini in performance. It starts to kind of float all over the track. This becomes a pain in the ass to maintain on the road without spinning off the track, and even if you manage to keep it going, you will still have to sacrifice a lot of speed doing so. So, out of the bunch, I would say my favorite car is the Zagato. Why? Well, because it's the most fun car to drive, essentially. And while the Arborth is a beast, it's just never that fun driving. At least not for me, anyways. The ST Wiper will probably stay in the garage until they, they patch up the rear wheel drive cars, uh, just like they did with the, the Agera. Um, some of them are more manageable, but this, this one really isn't in, 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 in my point of view. Um, this is worth the money though. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, it's only three cars, uh, although the DLC isn't that pricey. Uh, that's just my thought. Uh, well, if you're a car collector, then by all means go ahead and get it. But if you're short on cash, though, there are better in-game cash car available for, for free. Uh, the worst thing about this is that it's uh, so heavily focused on performance spec. Uh, while it's my favorite spec or tier to drive in, I was hoping actually for a little bit more of the, the circuit cars. Especially since both the Wiper and Zagata more or less was made for it, so um, I'm really hoping that they will release both of them uh, for circuit mode late or on. These cars will be exclusive to season pass holder for one week before being released to non-season pass holders. Uh, DLC packs can be purchased for $6.99 or your regional equivalent, and I'm assuming that will be around six years or something for those of us living in the EU. Uh, that's it for now guys, uh, hope you found this video useful and I of course like to um, hear your thoughts about the latest DLC if you're a season pass holder or next week if you decide to, to pick this up. Uh, hope you find this video useful as I said and as always stay frosty guys, bye.